Beyond this and into infinity is man's last frontier. Over two billion light years of solar system, reaching from the great clouds of Magellan to the galaxies of Andromeda and Triangulum. Through the eons of time, man has searched the heavens, peering incessantly into the vast millions of miles of universe, questioning every star, every planet. Can life exist? Like time itself, man's search for the answer never stops. He moves closer and closer to his final destiny. Exploration of the heavens. And so his probes have taken him deep into space, past the planets of Mars and Jupiter, Saturn and countless others. Relentlessly he will seek new worlds to land on. And always he will wonder if the next will be like the one before. Control. Phase one. Calling Earth control. Phase one. Calling Earth control. This is Earth control. Come in, Phase one. Request destruction of ship. Over. This is Earth control. Clarify your situation. Over. Gases. Penetrated suits. Others all dead. Please destruct. Malfunction. Can't do it myself. Tell him to put all systems on remote guidance. We'll bring him in from here. This is Earth Control. Put all systems on remote guidance. Prepare for takeoff. <coughs> no! Too late. Whole ship may be infectious. Radiation reading beyond Rentkin scale. Pain. Please destruct. Please destruct. With the destruction of Spaceship Faith One, the United States proceeded to test new power sources capable of carrying a ship far beyond the Earth's universe. Soon a probe would be hurled into space, beyond the stars. Man would again seek the answer to an ageless question. And so on a day in the year 2000, the United States rocket ship Hope One lifted from the sands of Cape Kennedy. watched and listened as it thundered toward history and an answer. Life 
Back at Earth Control once again, the activity here has settled down to its normal, if you can call it that, routine. Now that Hope One has successfully been launched, the crews are back to their tracking and recording work. The ship is well on its way toward the space platform, which is its final checkpoint. I see General Mark Tillman, head of the space agency, and perhaps we can get a few words from him. General, General Tillman. General, could you tell our audience a little bit on how the developments are going so far? Well, everything seems to be going according to pre-flight plans. Is this ship basically the same as Faith One? There have been some refinement, but uh, basically they're similar. Perhaps you could explain to our audience a little bit about the rather unique cabin design in the ship. Well, as you know, the entire ship has artificial gravity that eliminates weightlessness. In addition, each cabin is gyro-stabilized so that whatever position the ship is in, each cabin can be individually rotated to an upright position. There are doors that the crew uses as passageway when the ship is in horizontal flight. Once the ship is in the vertical or landing position, the cabins can be rotated. Then the crew makes their way through the ship by a series of ladders. And now, General, what is General? the critical? Washington on the line, sir. Excuse me. Thank you very much, sir. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes our coverage here of the activities at Earth Control. To the crew of Hope One, all of our best wishes for a safe and successful journey. Rotate, Gavin. Release belts. Estimate check. Ready. Altitude. 1,800 miles. Acceleration. 7.3 per second. Course. Two minutes, 18 seconds, vector alpha. Exhaust velocity. 7.3 to 1. Cabin pressure. Check. Guidance system. Check. Electrical system. Check. Elevate salvos. Systems report. 30 second duration. Ready on green. Power constant. Check. All systems check. Green light on all functions. Paul, call earth control. I'll check the lab equipment. This is U.S. rocket ship 970, Hope 1, calling Earth Control. This is Hope 1, calling Earth Control. This is Earth Control, clarify the situation, over. This is Hope 1, Dr. Martin speaking, all systems function green. Dr. Wayne is checking our lab equipment, we should hear from her soon. How do we look from there? Perfect launching from our end. Radar reports, no corrections on ascent. Speed and acceleration as per plan. Everything's fine. No damage. Dr. Wayne reports no damage in lab. No further information at this point. Hope one's clear. Colonel. Now that we're underway, I um, hope that you're still not bitter about me being aboard. I am not bitter. But as I stated when I filed my protest... Which was denied. On a ship carrying only four crew, there's no place for a woman. That's not what Noah said when he built the ark. Look, Miss Wayne. Dr. Wayne. Dr. Wayne. There's a couple of billion dollars tied up in this project. So when Earth Command gave me this mission, they wanted someone who had a fair chance of getting this ship up there and back again. I thought I might at least help select my crew. But I'm an officer, so I accept orders. But that doesn't make me think they're right. Why, Colonel, I'm beginning to think you don't like women. By the way, Colonel, 
I think I know where some of that billion dollars must have gone. Oh? To build a special helmet for that fat head of yours. <laughs> Deadlier than the male. Don't judge her too quickly, Hank. She's an extremely able scientist. It's not personal, Doc. I just don't think that women belong in a job like this. Well, what else could we do? Aside from her abilities, weight was a very important issue in the decision. The only other scientist who's qualified is our Dr. Wayne, is Dr. Martin Borton. And he's a huge man. Makes a difference of 120 pounds. And that we diverted into equipment. And we need every ounce of equipment we can carry. And she carries some pretty good equipment of her own. I don't know what Borkman looks like, but he can't be as pretty as she is. Well, let's just hope that the time doesn't arrive when we regret she isn't a man. Well, if I ever find myself regretting it, it's going to be too late anyway. We're picking up the relay at the space station. Sure looks pretty, but it would look a hell of a lot better if we were coming home. Make radio contact. Check positions. Hope One calling Space Platform. Over. This is Space Platform. You're on coordinate G. Bearing and speed OK. You will pass in 30 seconds. Good luck. Well, it's too late to turn back now. Approach scan. Unidentified well, objects 11 o'clock. Paul, Lisa, come up to control. I'd say it was some kind of a spaceship. John thinks we're approaching a spaceship. We don't have any other ships as far out. That's just what I was thinking. Try to establish communications with the trial wavelengths. Give us a bearing. This is Earth ship Hope One on open call. Over. This is 109 Hope One, United States spacecraft on open call for recognition. Do you read me? Call Earth Control. Hope One calling Earth Control. Hope One calling Earth Control. Come in, Hope One. Come in, Hope One. We've made visual contact with the spaceship. Bearing? 10 minutes, 27 seconds, coordinate G. Bearing 10 minutes, 27 seconds, coordinate G. Are there any other Earth ships in this area? There are no, repeat, no other Earth ships in your area. See if the one on intercept. Do you wish us to intercept? Over. This is General Tillman. This ship must be from another planet. Have you had radio contact? Negative, General. If intercept is possible, board for further investigation. Keep us appraised of your situation. This is Earth Control clear. Plot a course for intercept. Again, procedure. Exhaust velocity. 7.4 to 1. Systems report. Azimuth reading. Green. Electrical system. Check. Change course. 3 degrees, 4 minutes G. Subordinate L4. Decrease speed. Ease rockets off. Retros. Retros. On. Retros on. Acceleration moving to zero. 
I can't spot any propulsion units. Could be a refueling station, but nothing like I've ever seen. How do you plan to make contact? We'll bring our ship directly alongside. If we don't get any signal from them, John and I will try to board it. Moving into position. Retros. Off. It's not one of ours, that's for sure. I wonder what that dome is. Seems to be some sort of crystal. Could be solar energy converters. Looks like an airlock under that light, but it's wide open. Still no sign of life. Paul, try to make radio contact again. John, I'll get our suits on. This is Hope One, standing by for recognition. Over. This is Earth ship Hope One, standing by for recognition. Over. We'll keep in touch with you. Now, if anything goes wrong, contact Earth Control for procedure. Right. Be sure to keep a close check on the radiation. Ready? Let's go. Hope One calling. Can you hear me? Follow me in five seconds. step in a few seconds. Do you read me? We read you loud and clear. I'm in the airlock. John's almost in the lock. The compartment doesn't seem to have any airtight hatches. Everything's open. We're starting up into the ship, going through a hatch into a passageway. There's heavy instrumentation on both sides. We're in the ship now, Paul. Strangest thing I've ever seen. Radiation still low. We're going into the main room. I can hear all kinds of sounds, Paul. They could be coming from other parts of the ship. Ahead of us, there's a rotating tower. Could be a power source. There's a scope in here. I can see our ship on it. Still no sign of life here. This tower looks like it runs up through the length of the ship. Seems to be connected to the dome. We're gonna check the rest of the ship. Uh oh, we've got company. All right, nice and easy. Let's go down here. Seem to 
start when he fell. Like there was some connection with him and the machinery. Let's get out of here. Radiation's rising fast. Paul! We had to kill the alien. All hell's breaking loose in here. Put a grade A bomb with a timer in the airlock and leave the lock open. We're coming back. Come on! We're starting out of the airlock. John just left the boarding step. I'm moving off now. Approaching the airlock. Be on the boarding step in a few seconds. What do you think you're doing? I gotta destroy that ship. You can't go back there. That thing just drifted loose out there, with radiation building up. If it falls in the gravitational pull of the Earth, no telling what might happen. Get up the controls and get things set for a quick move out. Okay. Well, I never figured him for the hero type. What about the radiation, please? Well, the suit should protect him, as... As long as he's not in there too long. I'm moving into the control room. Hank, be as fast as possible in that ship. Radiation's rising. I'm setting the bomb for ten minutes. Hurry up, Hank. Don't take a chance on that radiation. I'm coming back! calling Earth Control. This is Hope One, calling Earth Control. This is Earth Control. Go ahead, Hope One, over. This is Hope One, Dr. Martin speaking. The alien ship has been destroyed. Over. Let me talk to Colonel Stevens. This is Stevens, over. What happened, Hank? Watson, we boarded the ship, Don one crew member. He attacked Dr. Andros, and in the fight, we had to kill him. Have you any idea where this ship came from? No, sir, except that I'm sure it wasn't from Earth. 
The controls were unlike anything I've ever seen before, and the, the language seemed to be an assembled code. At least I didn't recognize anything on any of the instruments. All right, Hank. I wish we might have made peaceful contact with them. Yes, sir, so do I, but uh, we attacked Dr. Andrews before we had a chance to communicate. That's all, Colonel. Keep us informed of your progress. Yes, sir. Hope one, clear. Finally, to discover another race, then have to destroy it. What did he look like? Well, he had arms and legs, and you know, from the shoulder down, he looked like anyone from Earth. Except the face was like out of a nightmare. <laughs> oh, man, was he ugly. He wouldn't make any small talk, either. Well, we tried to be friendly, but as soon as we got close enough, he attacked John. Hey, you know what? That makes me the first man from Earth to make contact with, uh, with someone from another planet. Do you know what the boys in the magazines would pay for that story? That's what it means to you? The fact that we discovered another life form means nothing? Well, I'll tell you the way I figure it. We've got enough troubles on Earth now. I mean, we're barely keeping from killing each other off. So? Well, suppose we had managed to make contact with them. So we treated them nicely. We became friendly. You know what happens then? Well, pretty soon, someone on Earth decides that we don't like the way they look. Or maybe they won't like us. Well, after all, one of us is going to be a minority group. Now, the next thing you know, the whammo, we're trying to blast each other out of existence. So that's why I say, we've got enough troubles now without trying to find someone else to bring us there. And now, if you'll pardon me, I'm going to change into something a little more comfortable. for beach parties, you know, warm summer's night, a little fire, friendly companionship, sure beats flying one of these things. Well, you don't get to fly one of these things, as you call them, by roasting marshmallows around a fire. Roasting marshmallows isn't the part I miss. Now, let's face it, you can't cuddle up to a spaceship on a cold winter's night. I like fun as well as anyone else. These ships are a 24-hour-a-day job, especially training for a flight like this. You tell them, Skipper, but things might not be too dull. I've seen a lot worse than our lady doctor. I bet you have. I'm sure even you've noticed that she fills out a spacesuit a lot better than any of us. Don't you think about anything else? Well, I'm only kidding. No one wants to see this flight succeed more than I do. Really? That surprises me. When we were in training, I got the feeling that this was all just a big joke to you. Well, just because I managed to have a few laughs, that doesn't mean it isn't important to me. I thought the only thing important to you was an unlimited supply of women. And I nice too, but there are other things I'm aiming for. Well, at least you're honest about it. Uh, it doesn't matter to me why you're here, as long as we understand each other. You do your job, and we'll get along. 
Yes, sir. How many times are you going to check that stuff? You don't have to prove anything to me. What's that supposed to mean? Well, we're not all like Hank, you know. You don't have to crusade for equality. I'm more than happy to have you aboard. Think of those long nights ahead. Oh, Buster. Just don't start that. Well, I mean, uh, we can keep each other company. Hank isn't going to be much fun, and uh, every time you talk to Paul, he starts waving that flag for humanity's salvation on Tyros. That is why we're here, isn't it? Look, um, Colonel Stevens may have some rather archaic views about women, but I'm still sure that he's the best man for the job. Well, well, to think your bark is worse than your bite. And to think you'd say something nice about him. He's entitled to think anything he wants about me. I just know that I'll make him change his mind. Well, you to make me change my mind easily. Your mind? <laughs> your mind doesn't need to be changed. It needs to be dry cleaned. You know, I think my charm escapes you. Oh, no, no. You, uh, you make sure that I'm completely aware of it. It's just that, um, well, I don't think it's fair to take advantage of the fact that I'm the only woman available. You may be the only woman, but you're not making yourself available. Now, look, if you'll behave yourself, I'll go and get us something to eat. Everything all right? I suppose. You know, it's funny, Doc. The more we know about flight, the less there is for people like me to do. In the early days, the men flew the ships. Now the ships fly the men. Well, it's, <laughs> it's not quite that simple. No. In the aft section sit the computers. These feed them constant information. Automatically, we correct course and speed. And these things can handle anything. Sure, but they're still on the machines. They can only analyze the information they receive. They can't anticipate what might happen. And in case they malfunction, everything's in your hands. Uh, I suppose. <laughs> Look, I've spent most of my life building these machines, and believe me, I know their limitations. Uh, in a way, I guess you're right. A million things can go wrong. Well, nothing is for nothing, Hank. Look at all the failures that we experienced putting this project together. Now, if Tyrus is what we think it is, we can provide life for millions. You know how I think of this forge, Hank? Like Columbus setting out to find a new world. And that's an opportunity not afforded many people in all history. <laughs> Dinner is served. Here you are, Paul. Lobster Thermidor. Somewhat compressed, of course. Well, it's not mean lobster. And for you, Colonel? A nice, thick, juicy steak? Some uh, caviar? Or perhaps you'd like our uh, special deluxe? All guaranteed non-poisonous. Uh, number two, please. And easy on the gravy. Why, I believe you're trying to be pleasant. And for you, one meatball. Put too much garlic in it. It gives me heartburn. You should have tasted this stuff before they made it into pills. This was something before they made it into pills? <laughs> Swollen meteorites dead ahead. 1.8. What's our speed? 8.5. Strap in, quick.
How close to the meteorites? 40 seconds. I'm setting up the force shield around the ship. If there aren't too many, we should be able to deflect. Using a lot of power. How long can we use the shield? 25 seconds maximum. Up, let through. Force shield off. Unstrap. What's our speed? 125,000. I'm going faster all the time. Keep gaining speed. We'll either use up all our power or burn the ship up. Keep calling off our speed over the intercom. Right. I'll check the computers. Come on, Paul. John, switch the manual. We're turning off computers. Roger. Switching the manual. Manual on green. How's our speed? We're off the dial. I think we're still gaining. That reactor is liable to blow itself up. Try to check our position. Checking position. How about that position? We should be nearing the triangular galaxy. Oh, come on. We're burning too hot. I've got to turn off the reactor. We used a lot of power in the last few minutes. It has to take us to Tauros and back again. Closing fast. Our only chance is to try to land somewhere and repair our trouble. Paul, will the guidance system work with the computers off? I don't think so. About all you'll be able to get will be your speed and course, and if you want to change direction, you'll have to use the retro rockets. Are your gyro compasses working? Negative on gyros. I'll check for malfunctions. Air circulation okay. Cabin pressure okay. Emergency electrical system, okay. About all we can do is keep on going and hope we can find something to land on. What's that corny phrase? A needle in a haystack? Moving through a cluster. Stand by. I'm getting a reading on magnetic pulse. How's our course? John, give me a reading on the mag pulse. Object reading rising. 8% deviation from true course. At this speed, that's about a million miles so far. Reading on scope dead ahead, 60 seconds. Maybe we're in luck. Mag pulse indicates a gravitational pull. Land mass indicator reading. 40% solidity, 60% water. Start closing procedure check. 60, 40, 30, 30 second duration. All instruments check green. Start power constant. Power on. Ready on green. When we're 20 seconds away, I'm going to give it full reverse thrust. I think I can risk about that much power. We've got one shot at this landing. That's it. Start your count. Now. 25, 4. Three, two, one, twenty. Reactors on. Start landing procedure. Stabilize. Stabilize on. Servos on. 
Descent attitude. 4.5 on descent. Retros on! Shooting the landmass, we're gonna hit water. Earth Control. This is Hope One calling Earth Control. Activate the hatch. This is Hope One to Earth Control. Over. I'm going to check the ship. This is Hope One calling Earth Control. I'll hook the exhaust and start regeneration. This is Hope One calling Earth Control. This is Hope One calling Earth Control. This is Hope One calling Earth Control. Hope One calling Earth Control. This is Hope One calling Earth Control. No good. Can't seem to get through. Must be metallic interference in the water. What's it look like? Well, it's pretty much of a guess. We're somewhere near the Triangulum Galaxy. I figure that uh, this is one of the moons that has escaped from its orbit. As close as we can figure from these charts, we're a couple of million miles from anywhere. Well, whatever it is, we're stuck here. Well, haven't we got enough power to make a drive for Earth? If we did, I'd give it a shot. Well, how'd we use up so much of it? I thought there was enough to last for months. When the computer was damaged, it threw the power to the limit. So? The reactor burns on its own heat. Parallel is like a gas combustion engine. Idling or cruising, you use less gas and driving at full speed. The heat of the reactor varies inversely to the demand put on it, so at the tremendous speed we were traveling, it almost depleted itself. Well, being stuck here at the bottom of the ocean, who knows where, isn't making me any money. So how do we get out of here? The generator's feeding electricity into the reactor, which it converts into heat. Now, we're stuck here till we can regenerate enough power to get us back. Paul. I want you to check the computers first thing. Right. We don't have a chance of getting back without them. Well, about all we can do is sit here and relax and enjoy it. Better get some sleep. We'll start fresh later on. Come in, Hope One. This is Earth Control calling Hope One. This is Earth Control calling Hope One. Come in, Hope One. Come in, Hope One. 
It's no use. I can't raise them. General Tillman, please. General? No, sir, no answer yet. They're now six hours overdue. Yes, sir, I'll enter it in the log right away. Hope one. Location unknown. I wish we could get through to Earth Control. Ah, uh, we don't have much to tell them. They can't do a thing for us. We're way out of range of any rescue ships. Well, we could have at least told them that we're safe. If you go where we are safe. Well, we seem to have survived any immediate danger. It's a question of fixing the computers and time the power source will rebuild. Uh, I don't think it'll ever get back to 100% efficiency. I think we'll have enough to get us back to Earth. You warming up for another dream? Oh, just a little something to give me strength. You can command my body, but uh, I insist on having my own dreams. You ever think about the good times back on Earth? Assuming there were times that you uh, forget that you're a lady doctor. Well, with someone like you around, how could I think of anyone else? Touché. When I get back to Earth, I'm not going to let any female that's had more than a high school education get next to me. You're making me too easy to read. I thought you were going to spend all your time making speeches and uh, writing books. Well, you may be happy to know that I'm going to devote some space to you in my book. About one line should do it. Oh, I think I hit a nerve. Yeah, I guess it is. It's a shame our communications won't work. We don't want anybody to forget us, do we, John? Well, this is even better. Think of the suspense. Stuck underwater. How will we escape? What, will I be able to save the ship? Will the strength of my personality be strong enough to keep us all from cracking up? I can see now this is going to be a love story. A love story? Yes, your own. How's this for a title? Me and my mirror. <laughs> <laughs> How about going on a lecture tour with me when we get back? I'll do the hero stuff and uh, you can break up the audiences with your comedy routines. If you really want to write, how about a chapter on fixing computers? I mean, this has been very nice, but I suggest we start with pairs. Now, if you'll come along, I'll give you a little practical experience. Come on, Hank. sitting here pretending that we're not where we are. Silly game for a lady scientist, isn't it? Well, the ship's not in bad shape. Paul and I can probably fix that computer and... You afraid? That's just what I was wondering. Isn't everyone afraid? Well, we all knew what could happen on a trip like this. No one guaranteed we'd make it. I wasn't looking for any guarantees. It's just that... Back on Earth, it all seemed so... so noble. Everything... everything was remote. But here... It's different. It's... I'm still glad I was the one they chose. I mean, what we're doing, it's, it's something important. But what good is it if it all stops here? Look, I've got too much of my life tied up in this ship to stop now. Even if we don't make it to Taros, 
least we know the ship's capable of it. Maybe another crew and another ship will be able to succeed where we failed. Say, I, uh, I've been wanting to tell you, I... I shouldn't have popped off about having a woman along. I'm glad you're with us. That's quite a compliment coming from you. I mean it. Maybe if we get back to Earth, you can take me out for a real dinner some night. You just name it. Uh, is there uh, anyone uh, back home? Not really. I've been so busy the last few months, I don't think anyone even remembers me. Good. How about you? Or are you married to your job? I guess I have been. But, uh... I think I can arrange a separation. Temporarily, anyway. Long enough for one dinner, right? It's been my life for a long time. You know, it's hard to teach old dogs new tricks. And you're saying I'd make a good teacher? Stranger things have happened. Not to me, they haven't. Look, uh, you can go on and play Tom Swift and his flying machine forever, as far as I'm concerned. What brings this song? All I said was we could have dinner. You can't teach old dogs new tricks. Why, you act like you'd be some kind of a bargain. Well, don't do me any favors. Hooey, what a temper. I've never been calmer in my life. Well, I'd hate to see you when you were mad. I never get mad. It's just that you are the most conceited, pompous... You know, that does it. Oh, look. Look, stop being so feisty and listen. I've never been one for fancy speeches. What I was trying to say is that I want to be with you when we get back. If that's a crime, just say so. Well, you sure go about it in a funny way. I accept your apology. Apology? And I think it's very sweet of you to do it. I like you, Tom Swift. I think we'd be very good together. Just get me back to Earth and I'll show you what I mean. That's tomorrow's job. Funny thing, I woke up last night with the strangest feeling everyone had gone off and left me. You must have been restless too, I noticed your bunk was empty. You ought to take a sleeping pill, cure your troubles for you. Oh, no, pills make me dream, you know how unsatisfactory that is. I imagine yours would be. Hand me that roll of wire, please. Did I ever tell you about the girl Lisa reminds me of? Now, there was a real charm who lived right up the beach from me in a little bungalow. And could she cook? Almost convinced me to give up my sinful way. Obviously you didn't. Well, I got the figure that why make one woman happy and ruin the hopes of so many others? It's a shame you have to waste all your charm on us. Well, I'll make up for lost time when I get back. Why don't you stop the talk and get a little work done? Oh, another doctor heard from. Gentlemen, let me remind you, I didn't sign on this pleasure cruise to be a mechanic. Will you stop? My tears are liable to short out something. Well, I may just change the title of my book to Ships I've Crashed On. Nothing personal, eh? You better hope you're able to write anything at all. Unwritten books by dead heroes are in very short demand. Well, Lord knows I've tried my best for all of us, but it's not my fault we landed here instead of on Tyros. What's that supposed to mean? Well, like the prince said to Cinderella, if the shoe fits. <laughs> Why, you phony glory hound. It sure as heck isn't my fault. Well, I didn't turn off the four screen, and uh, I didn't decide to land on the screwy planet. All right, now we know what you didn't do. Just what did you do? Now, this is ridiculous. Just a minute, Paul. Before that halo you're wearing slips down and chokes you to death, there's something we better get straight. I command this ship, on the ground, in the air, or underwater. I make the decisions. I give the orders. I don't have to explain them to you. And another thing. I told you before I didn't care why you came along. Well, I think I do care. There is some room for guys like you. 
All you ever think about is you. Number one, you. Who are you to judge me? Are you so perfect you can't be criticized? I do my job, and when the time comes, I'll be right there. Don't you think I know the trouble we're in? Now, look, I could suggest that you two step outside to settle this, but you might get a bit wet. <laughs> now, maybe, you know, that it's a good idea to blow off a little steam, but let's realize we all need each other. Just stay out of my way. With pleasure. Now, can we get back to work? grows your garden. Better all the time. You look mighty perky. Well, it, uh, it helped me to talk to someone. Yeah, me too. What's that? Must be an underground tremor. I think we better get up to the control room. John, up to the control room. Move the scope around, see if you can pick anything up. Seems clear enough. I'll change the angle. Nothing there. Seems active enough out there. Switch camera position. I wonder if it could be eruptions from under the ocean floor that's creating the noise. Hit it again, John. Looks like something's moving out there. Switch to a close-up lens. Good Lord. What a horrible-looking creature. What are they? I don't know. They're really tremendous. life we've seen on this planet. They don't seem to be bothering the ship. They could be afraid of the exhaust from the generator. But what are they? Well, I'm not sure, but I think they're another species of crab. But they're so huge. Well, huge or not, it means there's life here. Do you think there's life on the land? Well, you see the legs on those things. In the pattern of nature, they wouldn't have legs just to live in the ocean. What do you mean? Well, many people believe that the first Earth mammals were fish that crawled out of the water and evolved into animals. It's happened before. Why can't it happen again? But the size of those things. Well, remember the creatures that roamed the Earth? Dinosaurs? They were things of size. Well, this planet may be in the same stage of development that Earth was millions of years ago. But if that's so, there may be life, even humans on the land. Maybe. I wonder what the people would be like. Well, it's hard to tell how far they've developed, but if there are people... There is a way. We plan to search underwater on Taros, right? Right. Well, what's to stop us from taking advantage of our equipment and exploring the land? Crabs, for one thing. I think I can handle them when the time comes. Now you mean, leave the ship, swim to shore, pick up samples, return to the ship? You say it fast, it doesn't sound high. While we're fixing the computers, one of us can go ashore. Maybe find we can live, or that life can sustain itself here as well as it can on Tyros. Only one problem. You can't wear a pressure suit underwater. And when you emerge in the scuba set, you can't equalize the pressure on your body. We need to check the atmosphere from down here. But how? Can we use a pneumatic release line underwater? Yeah, sure. What are you planning to do? Well, we're carrying these vacuum tubes which we were going to use for air analysis. We could uh, float one to the surface. When it reaches the air, it'll fill up and then reseal. Then we can bring it back down here and see what the atmosphere's like. Hey, hey. sounds good. Great. Come on, let's get it set.
Once the tube emerges from the water, the release of pressure will flip out this valve. Then the air will rush in, the cap will expand and seal itself. Let's wind this line. Get in. Here we go. Well, it's through. I'll wait a few more seconds, then I'll bring it down. Okay, I'll bring it back now. Carbon dioxide, 0.3%. Nitrogen, 76%. Oxygen, 23%. Density, 5.2. Mass, 0.82. The air is almost the same as it is on Earth. The uh, gravity's a little lighter, but not much. That means that you should be able to breathe once you get on shore, and there shouldn't be any pressure problems. Well, it's worth a try. Well, there's no doubt about who should go. It's my baby. Okay. Let's break out a suit. Now, land should lie just past the bow of the ship. Not too far, I don't think. I'd stay close to the bottom all the way. I don't want one of those crafts mistaking you for the blue plate special. Ha <laughs> ha, very funny. Now, just before you go, I'll give him a little jolt with the force screen. I can't leave it on too long. Long enough for you to have time to get clear, I hope. Now, on the trip back, inside the airlock, there's a portable torch. It'll give you a defense against anything underwater. And once outside, check your transmitter. Oh, here's your sample kit. Oh, with all this junk, I'm going to look like a Christmas tree. Doc, take them into the airlock. When you set, call me. I'll hit the power for five seconds. Right after that, out you go. You set? Well, well I guess it's zero time. Now remember, you spelled the name Andros, A-N-D-R-O-S, for the ship's log. Good luck. Punching up. Towers building to activate. You about ready to go, John? I'm all set, Hank. I'm setting up the force shield around the ship. If there aren't too many, we should be able to scatter them. Be back with dinner. Keep the bills warm. Water temperature, normal. Mask on. I'm on my way. Well, nothing we can do for him now. I think I'll take a look at those computers. How long should it take him? Oh, a couple hours, maybe more. Do you uh, think he's going to be all right? Let's not make him into trouble. Just have to wait.
long has he been gone, Hank? Oh, a couple of hours. It's hard to concentrate on this. I keep worrying about him. Yeah, me too. We'll never get back if we don't fix it. Without it, we can't maneuver. Assuming we can get out all right, we can find our way back here, can't we? Yeah. In the astral guide, there's a recorder. It fixes our position every inch of the way. Well, we'll soon have these back to normal. Yeah, the power seems to be rebuilding okay. I think we're going to be in pretty good shape. Just be careful, John. See the fantastic parallel? He discovered life on a planet that's like Earth reborn. 
And surely some hand must have guided us here, too. It must be more than an accident than all the lifeless galaxies that we have to land on this planet. But we were meant to find this place and to return to Earth. You want to believe in fate? Okay. As far as I'm concerned, it's just one lousy piece of real estate. Well, there's one thing for sure. If we don't get to work on those computers, we'll never get back to spread the word. John? Yeah. Yeah, I've thought about him a lot. He taught me something. Oh? You can't judge people by your own standards. That whole business of his, you know, about the publicity, I think it was mostly a cover-up. I mean, it was like he was embarrassed because he really believed in what we were doing. Talking about writing that book. I wish I could have known him better. Yeah. Now well, let's get Lisa. Activate the hatch. It's growing. Hmm? Well, John must have planted it. Everything checks out. The water can be drunk, the air is thin but breathable. Earth people can live here. They can live here. Strap in. Well, here we go. Power on. Control to auto. All lights on. System green. Close hatch. I'm gonna try to ease us up. Something's holding us. the biggest one we've seen. He's not the problem. He's nowhere near the ship. One of them must have attached himself right to the ship. The thing must weigh five tons. What are we going to do? We've got to get rid of that weight. I don't know if it'll work. I'm going to activate the force field, try to shake him off. Ready, rockets. Paul, start your 10-second countdown. Now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hit your switches. All systems green. Here we go. 
Rockets, on!